Today is an exciting day for the people who dedicate their lives to confining people who have failed and rejected by society. Their pristine white plimsolls squeak in unison as they march down the empty hall, single file, eager to know what they've all been summoned to the staff room for. Nobody knows who has called them here, but as they flow into the room, they know he means business because of his shiny new briefcase and squinty Clint Eastwood eyes that analyze them one by one as they slump down into their seats. Silence fills the room as they wait impatiently for him to speak. Hello, thank you all for coming, he begins, his booming voice spreading to every inch of the room, filling it with noise, just as they'd hoped. I am Detective Reinhold, and this is my partner, Detective Shelley. He holds out a gorilla-sized hand to present the haggard old man beside him, slouched against the table with his arms folded across his thin body. Together, they look like a before and after shot of a raging alcoholic. The before being an honorable man, every feature big and distinguished, all held together with pride. The after, a frail shell of a man with more bags than Paris Hilton, his cracked and sagging body breaking a little bit more with every painful step. We've gathered you here in order to brief you all about your new tenant arriving tomorrow, he starts to explain. Some of you may already know of him. Ooh, is it Charles Manson? A young nurse called Paul, with a kind face and thin black hair, interrupts. Reinhold wonders how someone so stupid has managed to get a job like this. No, and I do not take kindly to interruptions. There will be time at the end for questions. For now, you need to listen very carefully to what I'm going to tell you. Paul hangs his head in childish shame as Reinhold continues. The patient in question is called Len Mosco. You may recognize his name from a number of national news outlets. If you are unaware, he is one of four suspects in the murder case of Gaz Nugent, who was brutally killed in the summer of 2018. The thing that makes Len so special is that he is the only living suspect. The nurses look around nervously at each other. There have been a number of stories emerging about what happened on the night of the murder. But one thing we know for certain is that Len and his three friends were the last people to see Gaz alive and, ultimately, deceased. Thanks to one suspect, Flick, who wrote her account of the night in question in a book called Gone... Gone Too Far West! Oh my god, I love that book! Paul interrupts again, instantly regretting his reaction. Well then, perhaps you can explain it to everyone. Reinhold spits through gritted teeth. All the while, Shelley stares glumly at the floor, unaffected by anything being said, almost as if he isn't listening to a word. Okay, Paul rises from his chair, hoping to prove himself to Reinhold. So, they were in a park, at night, tripping on drugs, and Gaz comes over, creeps them out. He walks off into the forest. Later, they hear a commotion. They investigate, but they all see a different murder scene playing out in front of them, so... Basically, no one knows what really happened. Wrong, Reinhold bellows. The interruptee becomes the interrupter. The nurses jump in surprise, especially Paul, who has cowered back down into his seat. Some of them stifle their laughter behind sweaty palms. Len knows what happened, Reinhold continues, and it is down to you lot to find out what he knows. If you do, you will be very generously rewarded. Worried faces transform into devious smirks as their interest is freshly replenished. But at the end of the book, Flick says she was the one who did it. Paul quizzes from the safety of his seat. We know, but we checked out that lead and it doesn't seem to fit the evidence, Reinhold explains. We've exhausted all of our systems and we still cannot get to the bottom of this case. This is our final option. We've bugged his room and we'll send a body language specialist in every day, undercover as another patient. He'll take on the role of the poker dealer in order to detect any deceptive behavior that Len might show. But additionally, we need you to use your techniques. He mimes quotation marks with his thick fingers in order to get the truth out of him.